It's time for the theater to be played out. We've been waiting for this and it's under its way. What's happening right now? Leading into it, Aqua is in this like uncontrollable volatile position. The emotional acting that he needs to get into is causing... Like it's like a double-edged sword, right? Because you're trying to relive those moments of like episode one, season one to get into that emotional vulnerable state. But doing so, while it may elicit that emotional acting that you need, it's going to also make him go crazy. There's competition, obviously, between Kana right now and Akane. I'm not really too sure who I want to cheer for, but hey, let's find out what's going to happen in today's reaction. Cinema. 大きな戦があった。名だたる強者たちが斧が死ぬ。その戦いに勝者はなく。Ain't this shit literally cut, copy pasted from before, right? It it is, right? 地の刀が極東の地に散らばった。この物語はある音始まる。Oh. Yo, the light play! Burido. Lolly Senpai! He's on me and this is Melt, right? This is Melt. Am I correct? Is this Mel? It is Mel, right? Okay, because like we're waiting for the craziest redemption arc from Re Melt. I hope he outperforms everybody, bro. <laughs> bro only knows how to play one role. <laughs> like, he straight up only- he gets typecasted. Ever since episode one, he just gets typecasted into- it's a, it's a different guy? Oh shit, my bad, my bad, my bad. Oh my bad, my bad, I got ahead of myself. I got ahead of myself, my bad. It looked like Aqua too much for a second. My bad, my bad, my bad. Where's Aqua right now? Sorry, I actually don't know the different character list. So hold up, hold up, hold up. We know that's Melt. Kizami is Melt. I obviously know who Kana and Akane is. Uh, the guy in the beginning. Blade is Himekawa? Blade is Himekawa, right? Am I correct to assume that? Blade is Himekawa, got it. Then we have Kana. Then we have, you know, Melt. Then we have... This guy is the guy that shit-talked Melt, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Monme. I don't know who this is. Is this the white-haired girl? Which one is Monme, man? I am... I'm, I'm, I'm not... Pl the playboy? Monme is the playboy? No, 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 you, no, no, you're, you're fucking 10 minutes behind answering my questions from a while ago, bro. You motherfuckers straight up just said that this is the trash guy. You said that this is the trash guy that shit talked to Melt. And then you say this guy is also... None of you are on the same pace. Every one of you motherfuckers are on different points of the stream answering my questions thinking that you're all on the same page. Holy shit, mobile watchers. Is it the same person? Hold up. I take it back. Hold up. I take it back. Hold up. I take it back, I take it back. Because this guy's intro theme hasn't been finished yet. That's my fault. I take it back, that's my L. Or is it? Is it my L? Because me getting mad like this and ranting is part of just the content. So whenever I mistake, whenever I make mistakes, it's actually never a mistake. All just content farming, bro. <laughs> I never make mistakes. Everything is intentional. <laughs> no, that's a fucking L, come on. <laughs> Who's next? Aqua? Is, is this Aqua? There's Blade is Himeka, Aqua is this guy. Got it, got it. Toki. Princess Saya. You know, for a girl that's apparently not important in the manga compared to Kana and her character, she getting her getting like the top position here and the last person as the intro have having such importance. Hmm. Wonder what kind of changes they made. Cause the previous script was like she's just useless. But now it's making her seem like a very pivotal point.
Now, I would say that the sound effects and the instruments played at the very end is racist. <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> right? Because whenever there's like desert oh, showing up like sand, right? they start playing the fucking Prince of Arabia soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well just put a fucking gong. No, 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 no. Bwong. <laughs> this, this right over here, bro. Oh, yes. Now what? <gasps> the play starting. Bureido. Someone throw a water bottle at him from the audience. <gasps> a rental sword? This power! <laughs> ah, Kana wants to drop down! Sorry, Kana, Kana. The Oat Sword. I love the scribbles in her eye here to denote that she's like supposed to be like a maniacal person right now. Okay. Nation seizing! Whoa! Did you see that too? Boom! Look at the usage of the different screens on the side to make it more immersive. This power! Damn! <laughs> you know what the fucked up thing is? <laughs> that a show like Oishinoko has better fight animations than most of the fucking fight Unga Bunga shows airing this season. <laughs> it is so embarrassing, bro. Like... <laughs> Not embarrassing because Doga Kobo obviously can't do it. They've shown us that they're an amazing studio that's that's just makes such amazing work. But you know the series Oshinoku is not a fucking combat show. It's a fucking theater combat happening, but this shit is wiping the floors with like pretty much all the fucking combat animes happening this season, man. <laughs> Corrected already? <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's so weird seeing Himekawa like this. You know? Because, like, you. I, it, I, I just can't even imagine him even looking like this because of how disheveled he usually looks and how nonchalant he's outside. But when he's acting again, it's just completely different character, bro. Just straight up locked in method acting? I don't know. But yeah, this is clearly why he is like rank one. <laughs> I guess this would be the second episode where it's filler now. Not filler, but setup episode and everyone drops it. Wow. Shinjuku. Huh? Oh man, the pacing is going crazy right now. Already Melt versus Himekawa? Melt literally got off screen. <laughs> Man, everyone, everyone Himekawa has beaten so far, they start off being hostile, then they lose, and they say, Hey, I'll join your side, please give me a good position when you're king. Like, what the fuck? Shameless motherfuckers. They all try to fucking fight and kill him, then they lose, it's like, okay, I'll join you. If you'll give me some land and, you know, a good position later on. <laughs> Shibuya 
Oni tai shita. Okay. Could it be Aqua? Aqua is Shibuya Oni? Is this Shibuya? Oh. <laughs> the dude on the left! That's the Megane, right? That's him! That's the dude that's always in the suit! That's always like... <laughs> I love that guy. I don't think he gets enough attention, bro. Because, like, obviously, he's not, like, a young, handsome-looking man. He, he's in this, like, salaryman business suit with the glasses. But, like, he looks pretty confident in his skills. So, like, he gets the Megane role. Nice, nice. Aqua and the uh, shitty guy. End of Act One. Tokyo Bureido. Dude. It just feels like I'm actually in the theater. Like the whole part of this Act One. I could... I, it genuinely felt like they're trying so hard to make me feel like I'm in a theater and watching a play. That was pretty fucking good. Oh, interesting! Melt versus the guy that was shitting on him last episode. Hmm, I mean, it's not like Milt can just win if it's not part of the script. Imagine he goes rogue and just says, fuck the script. <laughs> and he, he just... No, I don't think he'll let his personal grudge or vengeance get in the way of the acting. I think he's trying to be very serious this time. Wonder who wins here. Yeah, we know him, right? Womanizer, playboy. I don't know if he's necessarily a shitty person, but he was pretty shitty against Melt, and that's why I want Melt to dunk on him. Oh! Yeah! Yo, that eye roll. That, that eye roll there? What the fuck? <laughs> Yo! Okay, uh, day one is over, right? So act one has been done, and then tomorrow we'll do like... In tomorrow in like their story, right? So it's not like every act is gonna happen. Right now we're just kind of doing background stuff. Where's this flashback? What's going on right now? Is this a flashback? This is a flashback? Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Is that Adachi? Is it? Is Raida's voice actor Adachi? Or, or uh, Snapper from Viral Hit? Is that, is that him? I can't tell.気に入ってくれたならよかった。2.5次元のルールに縛られない舞台にするつもりだと思ってたけど。もちろん、それは2.5のファンじゃなくて演劇そのもののファンになってほしいんですよ。だからこそのだという他ないね。彼の原作リス
かろうじて九大店に指先が来て正直この子はないなって思った Okay, sweet today was just asked though お漁師で決まったところあるじゃん何か才能を感じてるとか Oh, this guy vouched? Huh, the guy on the right vouched for Melt Why? Is he sees Melt true potential? Personal thing? <laughs> Nepotism? Nepotism? <laughs> That's it. He's like, yeah, he's hot. He's got a good voice. So it's like, the, the rest of it can, you know, fucking settle on. Like, you, you can polish that shit. But at least he's hot and got a good voice. That, that's the only thing that matters. Just, just be good looking and have a good voice. And everything else doesn't really matter. Sure, okay. Yeah, yeah. How much bussy is Melt serving to get these roles right now? Yo, what Melt doing behind the scenes? What the fuck is going on? He works hard. Because the blade that he's using right now is more tattered than the other blades. Melt is first in, last out. In this arc, in terms of the effort that he's putting in, therefore, surely he's gonna have his moment, right? I wonder if his lines here saying "I won't be defeated by you, swine" or something like comes from like a personal place, right? Because of the rivalry or the way that sh the shitty way he was treating Mel, these lines are even like more genuine because this is how he truly fucking feels right now. Deadly Destiny Torrent name technique! You know what's fucked up? They just. <laughs> They just had this dude talk over the entire melt scene, bro. Melt just used the fucking name technique and that just got glossed over because you two motherfuckers are fucking yapping. I'm the one that's supposed to be yapping. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, shit. Melt got used by Senpai because he's hot. <laughs> so like, oh, he... It's the girl that's treating him bad because he's such a good looking guy. <laughs> it's not funny. It's more sad, but, you know, the roles are usually reversed in these kind of situations. Hmm. Life is too easy, huh? The privilege of being good looking, basically. It's the pretty privilege. <laughs> Bro literally walked in the street and a random scout. You! Modeling! <laughs> Success is just handed to his lap. But the story is interesting because even though it looks like success is just given to him simply by being spawned with good looks and having a good voice, what's the actual reality? He realizes how. How much he lacks compared to the other people in this industry, right? So it's like a real harsh realization of, I thought I was special. I thought I am the king, but as King Baru would say in Blue Lock, I uh, wasn't the king. That was his attitude going into Sweet Day, huh? <laughs> Let him cook! Let, no, you just haven't seen Mel's domain expansion yet! Let him cook right now! Sensei, don't give up! That's so fucked up, bro. Raida is already shitting on him before. While he's acting, a sensei is like, why do they even have this kid there right now? The opponent melt is lighting is like, damn, bro. Like, my acting is straight up being dragged down because of his level. Like, oh, bro, we are getting shit on every front. <laughs> melt, come on! <laughs> Yeah. Who's he talking to? Oh, 
<laughs> oh no! He's watching his own EK mode. <laughs> yeah. Did you really want my number? <laughs> Can I have your life? <laughs> the fucking EK mode. <laughs> He's cringing at it too. Oh no! Oh no! Yeah, I mean, you weren't trying, right? Melt never tried. This is huge character development, man. Bro, this redemption arc is crazy. That's actually, it makes a lot of sense why he was a shit actor too, because he never cared. The pretty privilege, everything was given to him. Then he goes into this new industry and everyone else is so talented and he's just so shit at it. And now he's realizing all the faults and like, what if I straight up had the right mentality from the beginning? This is a great characterization of Melt. He practiced harder than anyone else. Isn't that apparent? Like, I can't tell. Because obviously, we're not watching the entire theater play. But like, the audience is like, damn, this dude is actually so trash compared to everyone else. Like, obviously, to us, we can't tell because the story is telling a different thing, right? We are just seeing small glimpses here, and the, obviously, the audience is saying this shit because that's the, the way that the direction is. But, like, I don't think Melt is honestly doing that bad, man. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Melt showed up to Aqua and was like, hey, I need some help. My acting is, I think it's trash and people think my acting is trash. And Aqua's like, yeah, so what? Who cares? Your acting is trash. Get over it. <laughs> like what? It's saying don't care what other people think. What? Is the idea playing into other people's expectation of being a lousy actor and then suddenly locking in and showing what you've really worked on and the gap between what people's expectations were and what you're showing is going to be the difference? One thing. What did he one trick pony into? Instead of horizontal investment into many, many different things, just do one thing amazing. And look at that, man. Melt right dead in the center of the star here. Mm, what did he train? Did Melt just straight up just... He just did this? He just trained one sword slash, so he's literally about to have a fucking... He's gonna pick up the sword and literally just like have a shonen fucking moment where the entire stage audience is blown away. He like splits the fucking seas like Moses. Like, what, what, what do you fucking train, bro? True. Oh. The gap mode, the contrast! Oh. What the f- Did he practice that? Was that the one thing he practiced? Dude, he lifted that sword. He kicked that shit up. And it's a real- it's, it's, it's a prop sword. I would imagine it's got dull blades, but that's still so dangerous, right? Let's go, Melt! So basically, there's that one scene in the manga where he recovers the sword, and it's so fucking cool. And Mel just practiced that choreography so hard, and they're like, holy shit, it's that one moment. It's happening, right? That's what's going on? Is that, is that what they're saying? I think so. Wow, okay. 
の入れ知恵別に俺は演技が下手でもそれをうまく使えばいいって言ってたはい驚いてる人間の感情ってのは脆い予想外の That is true, right? Again, no expectations, then you're not gonna worry, right? If you have that level of expectation, then it's even harder to meet those standards, right? The same concept of like, if you hype up an anime so hard and you get your friend to watch it, but because you've glazed it so much and they watch it and they're like, it's actually not that good as you thought, right? But if you say nothing and you give them something and they're like, oh my god, this is so fucking peak. <laughs> ここはレベルが違いすぎる what else do you have then? No, that's totally right. If you like, have a better understanding of how different characters are like empathizing or have different relationships, then you can further enhance your own character and realize like what they're supposed to be. Is Mel getting inspired by this? What's going on? Read the manga. That's basically his character, is it not? That's 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 straight up his character, right? Like he, he's struggling shamefully right now in, in in the manga and melt right now. Is is aren't these like parallels? That's his entire life of acting so far. Because you're the same, man. It's match made in heaven. Damn. <laughs> Bro, who would have thought that someone like Melt would have this much development? Like, in episode, like season one, I thought he was just like dumbest character ever, and thank god he's gone. And then they bring his dumb ass back, and it's like, what's going on? It's like, oh my god, a redemption arc is happening. This is beautiful writing. It's like a kindergarten play. Hashtag sweet today. Kurumi melt is hot after all. Sweet today in the end. They're trading on their looks. <laughs> Just basically ego surfing right now. But like, that is so true. You practice so hard, right? You train, you practice, you, pre you prep for so long. Just for one minute, bro. One minute of screen time to make everything right right now. And we're getting hit with the flashback. <laughs> he came in. Wow. Whoa. Basically, the life of Melt as everything is given to him, right? He's so bored of everything. Success is so easy. Everything is just handed to you. And then, as he realizes, when he goes into the industry, that it's not the same. And that gets shattered. And what blooms now? A s I don't know. Uh, is it some kind of flower? Some kind of star? Is, is this supposed to be Melt's own fucking star? I don't know, man. You know, the star does have a very symbolic meaning in Oshinoko to denote those who have talent in something, right? But is, is this Melt's own star that he's receiving for this one moment? Chasing that star, man! Dude, this animation's crazy!
It's still going! Wow! Holy shit! Dude! Oh, this, this, all show don't tell. All show don't tell, but basically him clutching at the stars, working so hard. And he's being reborn here, right? He's being reborn. A new melt has been shown. And now he is Kizami. But who wins the battle though? Is it Melt or the other guy? In the script, does Melt die? Look at Raida's face. I don't... The fact that there's no applause right now doesn't mean that it was bad. Nope. The fact that there's no applause right now means people are shocked. They are frozen due to the sheer amount of budget that Dogokobo just fucking put in. But besides the means, the performance was so good, they don't even know what to do! Aqua's like, let's go, boy. Uh, even Sensei! Sensei's hype too! <laughs> Sweet day, Sensei! <laughs> you know why she's crying? She's crying right now because of you motherfucker. You ruined my show. Why? Why? Where were you in season one? How the fuck could you butcher my entire series and then show up for this? God damn you! Why are you so good? Maybe some mutual respect here. Wonder what he's thinking here. You can't see his eyes. The whole, you know, auditorium is just thundering applause. And that one minute of execution, bro, that one minute of opportunity, he executed perfectly. Stalling, not stalling, but basically like sandbagging in the beginning, right? To kind of show like, yeah, to have low expectations and then show up with that, you know, beginning of that choreography movement and doing all this shit. He got to be happy. There's a little smile here, but like, I wonder how he's truly feeling because the eyes are all covered. wonder if he's crying. Oh, no. Oh. See? He wasn't that evil. The mutual respect is there now. You saw the hilt of the other sword, right? Compared to everyone else's. Melt sword was tattered because of how much effort he put in, bro. One single minute. He practiced for that. For one minute of opportunity. That's crazy. <laughs> Happy ending, man, for Melt. Redemption achieved. <laughs> and that's today's episode of Oceano Cool. And this is Oceano Peak, man. The redemption arc for Melt has been executed. And he's good. Everyone respects him. Thundering applause in the theater as people realize that the kid that they were shooting on just delivered one of the craziest performances they've ever seen. Man, what a great episode. From the beginning, the way they did the intros and the kind of theater play, I know to say this is cinema is on a, it just like basically just a meme at this point, but this truly was cinema. In the true sense of like I was immersed into the theater play, even though I'm watching an anime. And then the rest of it was Melt's characterization of how he even got into the industry. The reason he was such a shitty character in season one is because everything in his life has been handed to him. He never had to try. Success was just given to his lap. So he just said, whatever, I don't care. But as he realized that there are truly talented people in the industry, he reflects on himself, even crying, right? Even looking at his past for Sweet Day and realizing that how shit he was. But what are the odds that Kizami in this manga is exactly what Melt is right now? About to go through redemption story, just struggling, losing, suffering. And because he can relate to that, he can even put all his heart onto the play. And everything changed as soon as he did that one choreography play, right? Where he kicked the blade up, did a bunch of tumbles, and caught it. No one thought that it could be done. That was all ad lib, right? He practiced that shit secretly, I guess, and never showed it during the agony rehearsals. He, like, that, that's what happened, right? Because, like, if he practiced that shit, people wouldn't have been shocked by it, but, like, like the other uh, actors. He literally kept that shit hidden. Never used it during rehearsals. Executed it, like, like, do you understand how risky of a move that is? 
Well, like, during the actual day of the performance, you try to do the most risky thing, and if you fail, you're done. High risk, high reward. He clutches simply because his work ethic won't betray him. And then, dude, this whole moment, just pure cinematography, no dialogue, just visuals depicting a story of who he was and who he is now. And then mutual respect just going all around. Just like thundering applause, man. This is such a good episode for Melt. And man, I wanted more. Part of me is happy because it's just like, yes, he got the redemption. Part of me is kind of sad because the Melt redemption is already over. But hey, he got his job done. And next up, I think it's Aqua's turn. And we'll see what's going to happen then. And that's it for me. If you're still here, though, and if you enjoyed this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlists for more content. And until next time, take care.